So uh, before I get into uh, binary regression models, I'd like to talk about linear probability model and its limitations. So before uh, binary regression model becomes popular, uh, linear probability model was the model that uh, most uh, statisticians and uh, quantitative researchers turn to. So let's study that model first and learn the limitation of this model and uh, the reasons why we need to turn to binary regression models. So the structural model of this linear probability uh, model is y i y. Okay, i is a uh, uh, sub subscript indexing um, case number. Uh, so y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Okay, so beta is this uh, regression coefficient and x uh, is a matrix contains uh, uh, information about predictors and epsilon is the error term uh, which contains, uh, which is a collection of factors that the model uh, somehow can now uh, take into account, okay? And um, here I can give you a couple examples. So why could be a, if a person voted okay? or not? So one is a person, if a person voted and zero uh, is if that person did not vote. And uh, let's say we have a single independent variable. Uh, here I use dollar sign uh, to denote income. So income is a, is a very, very important predictor of voter turnout. And alpha is the intercept and uh, epsilon is this uh, uh, error term. And uh, so we use this uh, binary uh, response variable, voter turnout. Uh, as as the dependent variable here. And here, literally, we can run a regression that we uh, talked about in our last lecture, right? And uh, we can use OLS regression, right? On release square, right? To minimize some of the uh, square errors and we can find a regression line. So here is a regression line. Uh, let's say uh, I find and here are the observations, right? The dots correspond to these observations. And uh, so we have dollar sign here from zero to 100, could be in thousand um, dollars. And then we have uh, a cluster of observations uh, for zero, right? And cluster of observations for one, right? We don't have other uh, possibilities for uh, the voter turnout variable, right? Okay. Okay. And we don't have any observation in the middle because uh, the response variable is either zero or one. And, and uh, by using uh, OLS regression, we figure out this line here, this line here. And uh, here, um, I just give you a bit of a hint about uh, what kind of problems that we're gonna have by uh, running OLS regression or running a linear probability model of this binary response variable. So let's say for uh, 60, right, $60,000, that income, we can have a prediction of, of Y. And that prediction, predicted Y, uh, got to be on the regression line, right? So it's somewhere in, uh, in between 0.5 and, and 1, right? It's slightly above 0.05. And what kind of problem we have? Well, let's examine the error here. Well, if it turns out that the observed y is zero. Then we have this error. It's called error zero. Well, if there is another observation, let's say, okay, for an uh, individual with $60,000 and that individual's y is equal to one and we have that amount of what? Uh, error here, right? And we know uh, epsilon zero is greater than epsilon one. That is uh, the kind of error made uh, because of, of uh, you know, uh, this, this um, 
error prediction, right? Uh, <coughs> the difference between the predict y <coughs> and observed y. Excuse me. Well, excuse me. The error um, for um, uh, did not vote for, uh, you know, the X here, $60,000 is greater than, you know, the error made by uh, voter turnout, okay, voter turnout. So here we can see the spread, the error spread is not equal. And the error made by uh, not uh, turning out to vote is greater than the error made by uh, turning out to vote. So that's one problem for using linear probability model. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so we have a, a list of, of problems limitations by applying linear probability model uh, to a uh, binary response variable. And first is uh, this problem it is called heterosedasticity. Uh, basically, uh, is the problem that I did just described in, uh, in that graph. Uh, the error terms, the error terms given X level, uh, they do not spread out equally across different levels of axis of axis. And here we have a bit of derivation here, a bit of derivation here, because the conditional Y, condition on X is a function of what? X and beta. Beta is a constant, but X varies. So we have what? Heterosedastic errors or heterosedasticity, right? And uh, that's a violation of uh, basic assumptions of our regression. Uh, if we use plain English uh, translation, then it means the spread of conditional distribution Y given X is different across X. <clears throat> and here is, is additional derivation about uh, why that is the case. And uh, you can go through notes to, to get into uh, technical details. Second, problem with uh, applying uh, linear probability models to uh, binary uh, variable is this non-normality. So since Y is binary, then the errors, right, we just talked about, the errors are not equal. So it's either epsilon one or epsilon zero. And, um, and they're not equal uh, as shown in uh, in the graph that I just talked about, that I just talked about. And also nonsensical predictions. We're gonna have nonsensical predictions. Uh, so here, let's say, uh, it, let, let's we have an individual with $100,000. What is its prediction? Well, the prediction is here. So it's greater than 1.0 and it is impossible right, to have a probability that's greater than one. And same thing is here, if we have individual that has less than $10,000, then the prediction gonna be somewhere here, which is below zero, gonna be a negative number. And that's again, nonsensical. Okay. Uh, another problem is the functional form. Right? Since the model is a linear, a unit increase in XK, a generic, uh, predictor results in a constant change of beta k in the probability of an event, holding all other variables constant. Okay, and uh, it is often uh, substantively reasonable that the effects of independent variables will have diminishing returns as the predicted probability approaches zero or one. For example, here. Uh, so let's consider the fact of having smaller children, right? smaller children. Uh, so here, all right? Uh, well, here we have two variables, right? Here is number of children as predictor and the probability of labor force. So 
as we increase the number of children uh, for females to uh, participate in the labor force decreases, right? That's pretty reasonable prediction. But as we increase the number of children from three to four to five to six to seven to eight, well, um, there are a lot of factors that will make uh, the relationship weak, right? So adding additional uh, child, let's say three to four, five to, uh, to four, okay, or six to five, that additional child probably won't harm uh, the mom that much uh, with regard to labor force participation, okay? Um, as opposed to what kind of uh, effect it has from zero to one, right? Because there's a lot of adjustment uh, that mom gonna make, right? From zero to one, that's a huge. From two to one, so that's double in terms of workload. Well, let's say if we have six, seven, eight children, the older ones a lot of times can take care of uh, little kids. And as moms accumulate their um, experience, right? Um, they will become more laid back and, and uh, they will manage uh, 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 large uh, uh, family uh, more uh, efficiently and effectively uh, through this uh, learning process. So there is this diminishing return. And same thing, let me pull back to uh, voter turnout here. Well, do you think, do you think, uh, you know, uh, you know, having additional ten thousand dollars here from ninety to one hundred, the fact is the same as let's say uh, increased income from twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollars. Well, probably not. Okay, so as we increase the income, probably the probability uh, of, of of voter turnout uh, is going to increase uh, just very infinitesimal amount, right? So, so let's say compare the probability of, of let's say Bill Gates uh, kind of uh, uh, turning out to cast his vote as opposed to let's say university professor, well, uh, having average income probably uh, $100,000. Do you think, well, the probability uh, uh, of, uh, of, of turnout for Bill Gates is a lot more than a university professor. Well, I would argue probably not. You know, once income hits certain threshold, uh, there is this diminishing return, diminishing return of uh, income to, uh, excuse me, for voter turnout, right? So there's this threshold effect there. So these are, some uh, basic uh, limitations of acquiring linear uh, probability model, literally using OS regression for binary uh, response variables.